Morning's radio broadcast. Command your morning is on the air. Join Evangelist Renee Sellers Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. on the prayer line. Command your morning with devotion, prayer, and pronouncement of daily affirmations by dialing 712-770-4010. That's 712-770-4010. And put in access code 266590. That's access code 266 Five nine zero. Set the atmosphere for your day. Say what you want to see with Evangelist Renee Sellers, a facilitator and certified life coach, here on WHLJ Foxy ninety seven point five. Now simulcasting with Moultrie WHLJ AM fourteen hundred. For more information, call nine one two six seven zero zero three zero four. That's nine one two six seven zero zero three zero four. You can also visit the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in. At www.theupperroomwaycross.com. Welcome, Moultrie, Berlin, Doron, Thomasville, and all of the towns in between. You, you are listening to WHLJ 97.5 FM. Simulcasting with WHLJ AM 1400, Moultrie, Georgia. Good morning, everybody. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, where our pastor is Pastor Samuel Sellers III, and we are live at 5 on this Command Your Morning broadcast. We're coming to you live on WHLJ, 97.5 FM Valdosta, Georgia, simulcast live on WHLJ, 1400 AM Moultrie, also online at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com. You can join us on the conference call this morning with these phenomenal men and women of God at 712-770-4010, access code 266-590. Get the recap tonight at 7 p.m. on WHLJ. This is another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because the Lord made it and we made the wake-up list. Can somebody give God a praise if you can hear my voice? That's a reason to give him glory. If you can hear my voice, that's a reason to give God praise. Uh, can somebody begin to dance around your bathroom this morning? We love the Lord, and we are so excited today to be continuing our journey through Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 30. And we're talking about what to do when you don't know what to do. We've been on this journey since last Thursday, and we're excited to be continuing today as we understand how to pull out uh, how to respond to crisis God's way. We're learning biblical strategies to responding and confronting crisis. Uh, before we begin, I am going to ask this phenomenal woman of God all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada, to lead us in a word of opening prayer. Evangelist Paulette Griffin, if you can. God bless you. Gracious Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. Lord God, you're worthy of glory. You're worthy of praise. There is none like thee, Lord God. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your presence is peace forevermore. And this is where we desire to be one with you, Lord God. We thank you for our down sitting. We thank you for our uprising. Thank you for another day's journey, Lord God, just to be able to give you glory and praise, Lord God. We thank you for the Upper Room Outreach Ministries. We thank you for Pastor Samuel Evangelist Renee Sellers for bringing forth Command Your Morning Prayer Line here on Foxy 97.5 FM. We thank you for another day, Lord God, that we can come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Lord God, together in your name, Lord God, to learn more of your word, Lord God, that we shall be able to be servants of the Most High God, rightly dividing the word of truth, Lord God, as we go forth in victory and in praise. Wherever you shall send us, Lord God, wherever the soles of our feet shall tread, there will have dominion, power, and authority, Lord God. For we have our victory praise all because of you, Lord God. If we had 10,000 songs, we couldn't praise and magnify thy name enough for all that you've done in our lives, Lord God. As your word has said, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, making our request known unto thee, Lord God. We've come to give you glory and praise right now, Lord God, as we learn thy word this day, Lord God. Heavenly Father, as it's planted upon good ground, to come up in the fruition as you called it to be, Lord God. We prophesy now to the north, the south, the east, and the west, Lord God, that you will grant us with a supernatural strength and the ability to fight a good fight of faith, Lord God, that we shall be the true vessels of honor that you called us to be. And Heavenly Father, that we, Lord God, we shall be good stewards over that which you've blessed us with. Bless each and every family represented upon this line. 
every ministry right now, Lord God, that we shall go forth in victory and in praise, Lord God. Look upon the leadership of our country and our nation right now, Lord God. And Heavenly Father, bring us together in one mind and one heart, Lord God, giving you glory and praise, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you've done in our lives and what you're yet to do, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for being Jehovah Yilehim. We thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God our provider. We thank you for being Jehovah Shalom, the Lord God, our peace, and we praise you. And we thank you right now for being Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God, our healer. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done and what you're yet to do. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. There's a song that says, no reason to fear. No reason to fear. We're talking about replacing fear with faith. That song is by J.J. Hairston and Youthful Praise, um, J.J. Harrison and Youthful Praise, I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my life. So these, for those of you that are listening today, who has the final say? Jehovah. If I could sing at 5 o'clock in the morning, I might give you a little something. Uh, who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. So we're talking about replacing fear with faith. What to do, what to do when you don't know what to do? Biblical strategies for confronting crisis, utilizing Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 30. 30. On Thursday, we did a somewhat of an introduction uh, of this text, and we brought out Second Chronicles 20, verses 1 and 2, uh, when you don't know what to do. And we talked about what to do when you don't know what to do, when you receive a bad report and you just absolutely don't know what to do. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1 and 2 says in the King James, It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on the side of Syria, and behold, Behold, they be at Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And we talked about on Friday, what about your multitude? We talked about, we went a little deeper into Second Chronicles 20 and 2 because he got the report that there was a great multitude coming against them. What about, and we talked about, what about your multitude? We talked about who is your real enemy. Do you recognize who your real enemy is? We understood that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So so your husband, your wife, your children, your 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 coworkers, other people, those are not your real enemies. There is a real enemy influencing that behavior. <laughs> there is a real enemy. Your real enemy is not flesh and blood. And so yesterday we went deeper into Second Chronicles 20 and 3, which says that and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. We begin step one because we're talking about a six-step process, and step one is to replace fear with faith. We started yesterday talking about that. Yesterday's subject was paralyzed by fear, energized by faith. We talked yesterday about how fear paralyzes us and how fear is like our spiritual incarceration. Fear uh, keeps you in bondage to whatever whatever you've done in the past and fear of the future. We talked about different phobias on yesterday that psychologists use to define fear, but we understand that fear is a spirit. Ah, false evidence appearing real. Fear is a spirit. And the Bible says, and we brought this out yesterday, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. So that is false evidence appearing real. That is something that you are fearing. Listen, sometimes we fear things that don't even exist. There are times that we fear, we get reports, and sometimes those reports, are, there is no evidence, there is no, no reality, there is no confirmation, that verification that this thing is even happening. But in Jehoshaphat's case, there was an enemy, a real enemy coming against him. As a matter of fact, it was like three against one. There was a real enemy coming against him. How do you respond when there, is, there are things, there are issues that are coming against you? What should be your response? So today... Today on this Transformation Tuesday, we are going to continue in, in part two of Paralyzed by Fear, Energized by Faith with our subtopic, Replacing Fear with Faith. 
Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. We've talked about the negative facets of, of this, this force. There's a negative force called fear. We've talked about all the negative aspects of fear. And the Bible talks about how he feared. But the narrative as what he was dealing with does not stop there. Although he was apprehensive about what was coming against him and had no solution to solve the problem, he knew what to do when he did not know what to do. Is there anybody out there that is facing a dilemma and you are – is concerning you, this thing, you don't know what to do. This is a great dilemma. You have no solution to solve the problem. But since we've been on this devotion, you have finally realized that there is something that you have to do when you don't know what to do. Jehoshaphat feared, the Bible says, but we need to understand that in his fear, he replaced that fear with faith. When he set his face to seek the Lord, he was replacing his fear with faith. Oh, there's somebody listening to me today that needs to Set your face to seek the Lord. I know you got a bad report from the doctor, but set your face to seek the Lord. I know there's some stuff going on in your marriage, but set your face to seek the Lord. There are some things that we got to stop arguing about and start praying about. Can somebody write that down on the index card this morning and cite me? There are some things that you got to stop arguing about and stop start praying about. <laughs> so... We understand that, that, that there is a principle that is often reiterated in the Word of God is that anything that is void in your spiritual life must be filled. Any void in your life must be filled. When the Apostle Paul admonishes us to put off certain negative behaviors, he immediately instructs us to put on other positive qualities. Jesus taught that when the evil spirits depart the spiritual house, must, it must be occupied by the Holy Spirit. So listen, when fear departs, when fear departs the void must be replaced by faith. Uh, somebody needs to write that down. You're going to need that next week. When, when, when fear departs, ladies and gentlemen, it must be replaced with faith. Jehoshaphat demonstrated faith. And not in people, not in counselors, not in palm readers, not in witches, not in uh, other people. The Bible says he sought the Lord. But he demonstrated faith in God by calling together all the people of Judah. To seek the Lord. The Bible says in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3 through 5, and then down to verse 13, it says, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord. Even on yesterday, my husband, who is an entrepreneur, who is a businessman, who deals with a lot of different people all the time, as things begin to uh, begin to try to affect uh, him through the business, we, we stop and I said, let's pray. Mm, I said, let's pray. And there are times that you have to call your family together and begin to have family prayer when you're going through a dilemma. There are times you got to gather the people in your office together and begin to pray with one another. Listen, because many and listen, even in in in, in the area where, where where I work, when our office, when I when even when our counseling office was facing a dilemma, when when uh, uh what is it called? When people um when the uh, what is it, whatever it's called, when you're constantly having to hire people and they're leaving, turnover. When the turnover was so great, people were leaving, people were getting fired, people were just constantly leaving, and the, the, the morale of the office was going down. What did we do? We called and we came together to pray. In our office, we came together to pray. Listen, in your ministries, when you're facing a dilemma, that is a good time to call the people together to pray. And, and, and one of the things that, oh, God, do I need to say this? <laughs> many times, so many times, 
the thing that we need to do the most is the thing that people want to do the least. We need prayer. We need to go before the Lord in prayer. We need to come together in prayer. When we go, when we have a concert, everybody shows up. But when we call midnight prayer, we got two or three people in the house. Listen, the, Bi- we, the, the Bible says to pray without ceasing. It says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. The Bible says be anxious for nothing but with prayer. So therefore, prayer should be our initial response to crisis. Ah, prayer, everybody see, should be our initial response uh, uh, to crisis. And so that I finished reading that, listen, this was a, a, a declaration of faith that he was demonstrating, even though his initial response was, listen, when my mother was in the emergency room and the doctor was giving us all those bad reports, I had to walk out of that ER room. I had to walk out of that trauma number three. I had to walk out in the hallway. I had to go outside and begin to pray because my mother did not need a crybaby. My mother needed an intercessor, ladies and gentlemen. And but listen, when the doctor, ew, he, he, he had a believe it, that she wouldn't even make it through the night. But my mother was more alert after we prayed. She was more alert the next morning than she was when we went into the emergency room. Listen, the next time you go to the doctor's office or the ER and the doctor is giving you all these negative reports, just say, excuse me, and go outside and begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, begin to lift up the name of Jesus and begin to decree and declare what the word says about that situation. Begin to decree and declare what thus saith the Lord. Begin to decree and declare what you want to see. My mother's still here today, but the doctor wasn't expecting her to make it through the night. Mm. And so the king and the leaders, every family, even the children, ladies and gentlemen, stood expectantly before the Lord. Now, you know it's bad even when you're calling the children to come to prayer. Come on, somebody. And so their actions, by their actions, they, were, they declared we are positioning ourselves in faith and remaining here until we find out what to do. And there are a lot of times that, listen, we, sometimes, and I said this before, we, we go before the Lord, but we don't wait on the response. And I'm encouraging you today, when you go before the Lord, listen, wait on the response. Wait for further instructions. A lot of us wouldn't be in the situation that we're in if we'd wait for God to give us instructions. A lot of us wouldn't be financially struggling if we wait for God. We wait on God for the instructions. A lot of us wouldn't be in that bad relationship if we had waited on the Lord for instructions. <laughs> oh, God, if we'd wait for the instructions, ladies and gentlemen, they were declaring that we are positioning ourselves in faith and remaining here until we find out what to do. Henry, Matthew Henry stated, Those that would seek the Lord so as to find him and to find favor with him must set themselves to seek him, must do it with themselves to fix fixedness of thought of though with sincerity of intention and with the utmost vigor and resolution to continue seeking him. That's Matthew Henry. The Amplified Version says of, of this text says that Jehoshaphat set himself determinately as his vital need. Literally, this means that he set him his face to seek the Lord, yearning for him with all his desire. Have you ever been in a situation where you were yearning for the Lord with all, all your desire? Listen, you were yearning for him. You knew that he was the only answer. You knew that nobody else could resolve this issue but God. Can I get a but God this morning that you bought, listen, that you took that thing to the Lord in prayer and you got a but God, listen, because you came out victorious? that you took that thing to the Lord in prayer and you got a but God because he opened the door. You took that thing to the Lord in prayer and you got a but God when they said you couldn't get the house. God made it possible and now you're living in your dream home. Can somebody help me say amen? Oh God, yearning for him with all his desire. We are admonished to seek the Lord continually. Let's take a look at first. Chronicles 16 and 11. We're going to look at it in the contemporary English version of the Bible. It says, trust the Lord and his mighty power. Worship him always. Listen, trust the Lord 
and his mighty power. Worship him always. Listen, we are to set our hearts to seek him. First Chronicles 22 and verse 19 of the contemporary English version of the Bible. We are to set our hearts to seek him. It says, obey the, obey the Lord your God with, all, with your heart and soul. Begin work on the temple to honor him so that the sacred chest and the things used for worship can be kept there. Obey the Lord your God with your heart and soul. We are to seek, seek, seek God, seek, seeking God results in rejoicing. Get a little tongue-tied this morning. Write this down. Seeking God results in rejoicing. First Chronicles 16 and 10 of the CEB. Oh, God, here it is. Celebrate and worship his holy name with all your heart. Seeking God brings forgiveness and healing. Second Chronicles 7.14, a popular and often quoted passage of scripture, and I believe we need this now in our nation. This, listen, this is the response that the congresswoman should have used. This is the response that believers should use, is not to uh, incite negative behavior, but to seek the Lord. Not to incite and put in the minds of people to treat people bad because of the way they treat you, but to seek the Lord. I was a bit disappointed in that response from the congresswoman. We are to seek the Lord. And it says in Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and hear, heal their land. Hosea, the prophet, said in Hosea 10 and 12, Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. God's hand is, a, is upon those who seek him, according to Ezra 8, 21, making them understand all things, according to Proverbs 28 and 5. We are promised that if we seek, we will find, Matthew 7, and seven, and that God rewards those who seek Him, according to Hebrews eleven and six. Deuteronomy four twenty nine says, "But but from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find Him if you seek Him with all your heart and with all your soul." David says in Psalm twenty seven and four, "One thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple." Psalm twenty seven. And eight says, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will see. Somebody needs to make a declaration today and reference Psalm 28 and 8. Lord, you said, seek my face. My heart said, my heart said said, your face, Lord, I will see. Can somebody decree and declare today and make that declaration today that, Lord, your face will I seek. Uh, when I'm going through a challenge, your face will I seek when I'm going through what this nation is going through right now. Your face will I seek when my family is going through a crisis. Your face will I seek. And so uh, Psalm 63 and 1 says, Oh, God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Jehoshaphat did not just seek God's hand to move on his behalf. Rather, he sought God. Pastor Sellers often says, and I said this um, not too long ago in a service, that many times we want God's hand and not his heart. And you know, how, how, what do I mean? We want God's hand and not his heart. We, we get locked up and we pray for God to get us out, but as soon as we get out, we don't glorify God, wanting his hand and not his heart. We get in a bad relationship. We pray for God to, you know, to find us a man or a woman. As soon as we get in that relationship, we forget about God, wanting his hand and not his heart. And so we need to understand that Jehoshaphat did not just seek God's hand, but the Bible says he sought God. 
A lot of us seek the work of God instead of God himself. A lot of us seek God. We want God to do something for us, but as soon as it's done, we forget about God. We seek him to change our circumstances. We seek him to defeat our enemies. We seek him to increase our finances. Jehoshaphat sought God, and as he and all Israel stood before the Lord, he made a powerful declaration of faith. Listen, in Second Chronicles 20 and 6, he says, O oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven, and do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations, and in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand? Listen, Jehoshaphat was talking to a God that he had relationship with. Jehoshaphat was seeking a God that he knew could solve this problem. A bad report, a great multitude, you don't know what else to do, but Jehoshaphat boldly declared his faith in the face of all these things he was going through. He declared his faith, oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? He declared his faith in God, ladies and gentlemen, in the midst of an adverse situation. So therefore, when you're in the midst of an adverse situation, that is the the time to declare your faith in God, to seek God, to seek God. Uh, We're not going to finish this today. I don't believe. Let's take a break for station ID. We are live at 5 on WHLJ 97.5 FM by Dosta, Georgia. Simon Caston live on the oh God, on WHLJ, 1400 AM Moultrie, also online at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com. Join us on the call every morning, Monday through Friday, live at 5, as we are right now discussing Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. The number to call, 712-770-4010, access code 266-590. Get the recap at 7 p.m. tonight. What is faith? We're going to close with this. What is faith? If you're going to replace fear with faith, then you have to understand what faith is and how to attain it. The Bible defines faith, and uh, many of us quote this, Hebrews 11 and 1, as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The Amplified Version of Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith is perceiving as real what is not revealed to the senses. Faith gives assurance that, listen to this, faith gives assurance that things promised in the future are true and that unseen things are real. My mother being in that room and the doctor giving us all these negative reports, listen, that unseen thing, I begin to pray for what I could not see. Can somebody help me say amen? I begin to pray for what I could not see with my natural senses. I begin to pray for her healing, even when the doctor was saying that's not, I, listen, as a matter of fact, I didn't even want to listen to him anymore. <laughs> I'm like, this is too much for me. I'm a woman of faith. I'm a child of God. This is too much for me. I can't take all this negativity. You got to get to a place where you can't handle all that negativity, and you begin to put your trust in God, knowing that, listen, that, that those things promised in the future are true and that unseen things are real. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much, and when you begin to pray without ceasing and decree and declare the word of the Lord, you got to, listen, listen, God responds to the prayer of the righteous. I said the righteous. And so the words faith and believe are used nearly 500 times in the New Testament. And faith is one of the basic doctrines of us for us as believers listed by the Apostle Paul in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 through 6. Let's read this in the uh, contemporary English version. Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 1 through 6, in the contemporary English version of the Bible, it says, we must try to become mature and start thinking about more than just the basic things we were taught about Christ. We shouldn't need to keep talking about why we ought to turn from deeds that bring death and why we ought to have faith in God. And we shouldn't need to keep teaching about baptisms or about the laying on of hands or about people being raised from death and the future judgment. Let's grow up if God is willing. But what about people 
who turn away after they have already seen the light and have received the gift from heaven and have shared in the Holy Spirit? What about those who turn away after they have received the good message of God and the powers of the future world? There is no way to bring them back. What they are doing is the same as nailing the Son of God to a cross and insulting him in public. I think I need to read that again. Verse 4 through 6, Hebrews 6, contemporary English version, verse 4 through 6. But what about, let's grow up, verse 3, if God is willing. But what about people who turn away after they've already seen the light and have received the gift from heaven and have shared in the Holy Spirit? What about those who turn away after they have received the good message of God and the powers of the future world? There is no way to bring them back. What they are doing is the same as nailing the Son of God to a cross and insulting him in public. Has anybody ever thought about that? You, you, you've been introduced to the gospel. You've received the good news. You understand what the word says and still turn away? Do you realize, and I know some people may say different, but do you realize that it is the same as nailing the Son of God to a cross and insulting him in public? Mm, let that marinate this morning. It's the same as nailing him to the cross and insulting him in public. Let me read that. Verse 6 in the King James. If they fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Hmm. And put him to an open shame. Verse 4 says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, and have tasted of the heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they fall away, to renew them again unto repentance. Faith differs from hope, because hope is simply a desire or expectancy concerning things in the future. Faith is the belief in something you cannot see, but have assurance you already possess. Uh, I need to say that again. Faith is the belief in something you cannot see, but have assurance you already possess. Hope is in the mind, while faith is in the heart. First Thessalonians 5 and 8, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet the hope of salvation. In, in this particular verse, faith is associated with the region of the heart as a breastplate. Hope is a helmet associated with the head or the mind. Hope is a mental attitude of expectancy about the future, while faith is a condition of the heart producing belief in God. Romans 10 and 10 says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Believing with the heart always produces change in your life. The result is something experienced in the present, not something and hope for in the future. The result is something experienced in the present and not something hoped for in the future. Faith is not what we see. Faith always goes beyond what we see to what we hope for and what we believe we receive. That is why we thank God for the answer to our prayer before the answer is seen. Listen, when it is seen, we thank him by sight, but then we are no longer thanking him by faith. Faith is not the same as mind over matter, which teaches that man can overcome problems by using his mind or his reason or his willpower. Listen, these teachings are man-centered because they rely on self instead of God. Faith is God-centered, not man-centered. It is a gift of God, not something produced through self-effort. There is a natural faith that most develop, a trust in things that prove stable. For example, you have faith that when you flip on the, the switch in your bedroom that your light's going to come on uh, uh, 
conducive to the fact that you paid your bill. <laughs> a lot of us get on airplanes, and I think about that all the time, how we ride airplanes, and we, we have faith that that airplane is going to stay up in the air. And, and I begin to pray, Lord, you take the wheel. I'm not putting my trust in the pilot. God, you take the wheel of this plane. But many times we get on those planes without a second thought. Do you, do you ever think about that? We get in our car many times without a second thought that that car is going to get us from point A to point B. We get on trains and planes. We go on cruises, and we, oh, my goodness, we get on cruises and, and have faith that that boat is going to stay on the water. If you have faith in a boat, if you can have faith in an airplane, why is it so difficult to have faith in God? Why is it so difficult to have faith in God? You get on that boat and you sit by that pool and you'll be just fine. You'll go to sleep. Well, listen, I want to encourage you tonight. I know the doctor said one thing, but I need you to go to bed tonight. I know there's all this kind of stuff going on in your house, but I need you to get some rest. I know there's some stuff going on with your business that you don't understand, but can I help you? Go to sleep tonight. Leave it in the hands of the Lord, and go to bed. <laughs> Can somebody say go to bed? As a matter of fact, I know some of y'all got up just to listen to command your morning. When we get off the air, go back to sleep. Get some rest. Don't let that thing frustrate you. But put it in the hands and leave it in the hands of the Lord. Biblical faith is confidence placed in what is not seen, but is declared as fact because it is evident to the natural senses. Biblical faith, faith is not just faith in general, but it is directed faith. It is faith towards God, referenced in Hebrews 6 and 1. Faith in general can be misdirected. You can misplace your faith by placing it in carnal weapons. David declared in Psalm 44 and 6, I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. And he said, Psalm 20 and 7, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. There are people that put their trust in money, and when the money's gone, they cannot live. They feel like they don't want to live anymore. There are people that put their trust in other, other people, and when that person is gone, they don't want to live anymore. There are people that put their confidence and their trust in, in, in leaders, and then when they mess up, they don't want to go to church anymore. But listen, he, David said, the psalmist said, that some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I want somebody to make that declaration today that, listen, no. No matter what other people trust in, I will remember the name of the Lord my God. We don't have time to finish today. But true faith is directed toward God and is a potent spiritual weapon. As Paul described, spiritual armor in Ephesians 6.16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith which, which, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked ones. Listen, when you face impossible circumstances in this life, Satan attacks your faith by sending darts of unbelief into your mind. Faith provides a powerful spiritual defense to what the enemy throws at you. Faith is above all the spiritual weapon. Faith is your spiritual weapon. And so, Psalm 146, as we close, do not put your trust in princes nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. Psalm 41 and 9 says, even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. You can misdirect your faith by trusting in yourself instead of God. Proverbs 28 and 6 says, he who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered. Confidence in money or position is also misplaced faith. Uh, Psalm 52 and 7 says, here is the man who did not make God his... Mm. <laughs> I might have to go to the CEV on this one. Here is the man who did not make God his strength. In the Great Depression, there were many suicides when rich people lost their money because they put they listen. God was not the source of their strength. It, it, oh God! And, and, and oh. one of the reasons. That depression is causing people to take that final drastic measure 
is we're not relying on God to be our strength. And that's it. Here is the man who did not make God his strength. Even when that spirit hits you, as the spirit of fear hit Jehoshaphat, when that spirit of depression hits you, like that spirit of fear hit Jehoshaphat, just like he responded and replaced fear with faith, I encourage you to replace that depressive mentality with joy immediately, with the joy of the Lord. He, but Psalm 52, here is the man who did not make God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. Psalm 52 and 7 of the CEV. Oh, my. Can somebody t- encourage somebody today to let the joy of the Lord be your strength? Psalm 52 and 7 of the CEV. It says, just look at them now. Instead of trusting God, they trusted their wealth and their cruelty. Instead of trusting in God, many people trust in relationships. They trust in their businesses, and when the business falls apart, they fall apart. But I want to encourage you today to put your total and complete trust in God. When things in your life are not going the way you think they should go, replace fear with faith. Tomorrow morning, you've got to stay with me. Because we're going to talk about how to do that, how to replace fear with faith as we go into part three tomorrow of Paralyzed by Fear, Energized by Faith. So I'm going to ask the woman of God this morning to take us in with a word of prayer. And as she does, we're going to pray that you will learn to put your total and complete Trust in God. Pastor Gloria Moore Wright, woman of God, take us in this morning with a word of prayer. God bless you, everybody. Join us tomorrow morning, live at 5. Father God, we bless you today. We love you, God. We appreciate you, Father. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy that is new every day. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. God, we thank you because it is you that have made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of your pastor. We thank you, God, because, hallelujah, you're our Father, and we look to you today, O God, for guidance. We look to you today for help in the time of trouble. And we thank you, God, because you are a very present help in the time of trouble. We thank you, hallelujah, for giving us your son Jesus to die on the cross that we might have a right to the tree of life. We gladly accept that right. We gladly, hallelujah, receive that free gift of life everlasting. Lord God, we bless you today for you're worthy of all the praise. You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor. Lord God, we come to you replacing our fear and our doubts, O oh God, with faith. We come to you, O oh God, surrendering all our heart, our mind, and our soul to you, Father God. We bless you today, O oh God, hallelujah, because uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength, and our uh, strength is made perfect in weakness. We bless you today, God. We love you today, God. We appreciate you today, God. We come today united, O oh God, looking to you, O oh God, from which all our help come from. Lord God, we thank you, hallelujah, for being uh, everything that we need, everything that we want. We thank you, God, for being our Jehovah Jireh. It is you that supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. We thank you, God, for being our Jehovah Rapha. It is you, God, that rise in the morning with healing in your wings. It is you, God, hallelujah that gave your son Jesus who bare the stripes that we might be healed, and we thank you for that healing today. We thank you for that deliverance today, oh God. We lift up all those that are sick, all those that are afflicted, all those that are having infirmities in the flesh, oh God. And we decree and declare healing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we come against every man of sickness, every man of disease. Uh, We take authority over it right now. Hallelujah. We plead the blood of Jesus against diabetes. We plead the blood of Jesus against uh, heart conditions and lung disorders. We plead the blood of Jesus against arthritis. We plead the blood of Jesus against high cholesterol. 
cholesterol, against cancers and tumors and AIDS and sickle cell anemia, blood disorders. Hallelujah. We plead the blood of Jesus against kidney disorders. We command kidneys, hallelujah, to operate like you designed them to operate, God. We command hearts, oh God, to be regulated, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, skin disorders, oh God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, God. We may not see it, may not feel it, but we thank you for our healing. Thank you for our deliverance, oh, God. Thank you for healing eye disorders right now, God. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for healing uh, uh, ears, oh, God, and hearing, oh, God, and sight, oh, God. Hallelujah. We just bless you today, oh, God. And we thank you. We know it's nothing too hard for you and that you can do anything but fail. We know, God, that your arms are not too short, that they can't reach out, that they can't save, oh, God, that they can't deliver. And we thank you for that today. We lift up upper room ministries before you right now, God. Pastors, sellers, and evangelists, sellers, oh, God, we pray blessings upon them, oh, God. Lord God, everywhere their foot trod, oh God, we pray blessings, oh God. Lord God, everything they put their hand to, oh God, we pray blessings upon them now, God. In the name of Jesus. And Lord God, hallelujah, not only them, but we lift up every ministry represented on this call. Every ministry under the sound of my voice, oh God. Lord God, we ask that you will bless the entire body of Christ everywhere, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you we would unite, oh God, and that we will fight sin and the devil instead of fighting one another, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, let your people come together as one, O oh God. Lord God, we know, hallelujah, that there is strength and unity, O oh God, and we just bless you for that today. Lord God, we lift up families today, O oh God, families that are few, fewing, O oh God, families that are at odds against one another, O oh God. And we pray, God, that you would, hallelujah, unite and that you would unify, O oh God, and that you would bring them together, O oh God, sisters and brothers that are not speaking, O oh God, mothers and daughters, fathers and sons. Oh God. And Lord God, we pray, oh God, that you would let love abide, oh God. In the name of Jesus, let love abound, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you for right now, God, bringing peace in the midst of confusion, Father, in the name of Jesus. Cousins that are not getting along, oh God siblings that are not getting along, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pull down every stronghold. Lord God, we know that our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, we pull down every stronghold right now. In the name of Jesus, we pull down unforgiveness. We pull down our fear and doubt right now. In the name of Jesus, we pull down lack right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Lord God, we pull down anxiety and oppression and depression right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we just thank you right now, God. Hallelujah for giving us the keys to the kingdom, oh God. You said whatever we bind down here will be bound in heaven, and whatever we loose down here will be loosed in heaven. So we, hallelujah, we bind the works of the devil right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We cast off darkness and put on light right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you right now. Now, hallelujah, we thank you, God, hallelujah, for equipping us, oh, God, and qualifying us, oh, God, to be the sons and the daughters that you have called us to be, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning with you on our minds, hallelujah. We thank you, God, for keeping us closed in our right mind. Thank you for the activity and the use of our limbs. Thank you for lying down last night, arising up this morning, oh, God, to bless your holy name. Thank you, God. We thank you, Father, for blessing us going out and coming in. Thank you, God, for making us the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, lenders and not borrowers, oh, God. We thank you, hallelujah, for the benefits, hallelujah, that you daily load us with, oh, God. Oh, God, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you, God. God, for the things that we take for granted, oh, God. Oh, God, for the things that we overlook, oh, God. We thank you for them, oh, God. Oh, and we bless you right now, oh, God. Hallelujah for the big and the small. We thank you, God, for the rough and the tough. Hallelujah. Lord God, for if we didn't have a problem, we really would know that you can solve them. But, God, we know. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. 
We know, O oh God, that you are our help. We know, O oh God, that ways have already been made for us. While we're trying to figure it out, you already got it worked out, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And when we're facing problems, O oh God, when we're facing challenges, when we're facing crisis, O oh God, and don't know what to do, O oh God, help us, O oh God, to set ourselves. Help us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, O oh God. Help us to lean and depend on you, O oh God. Help us to trust in you with all of our hearts with all of our minds and with all of our souls, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we lift up our sons, our daughters, our children, our grandchildren today, oh God. We thank you, God, for keeping the ones that are saved, oh God. We ask that you would save the ones that are not, oh God. Not just ours, oh God, but we lift up every sinner everywhere, oh God. And we ask, oh God, that you would help them to know, oh God, that nothing they have done is too gross and too uh, rough or tough that you can't forgive them, oh God. Let them know that your grace is available for them. Let them know that your mercy endure forever. Let them know, oh God, hallelujah, that that's why you gave your son, just for them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, lead them and guide them and draw them into the midst of the foe. Give them a heart and a mind, oh God, to know that you are the answer, hallelujah, that Jesus is the answer. That thing they've been searching for, oh God. Hallelujah, looking all over. Hallelujah, can't find nobody. God, let them know that you are it. Hallelujah, thank you, God. And we bless you today, God. We glorify you, we magnify you, and we lift you up, oh God. We don't need 10,000 tongues, God. Just help us to use the one we got. We don't need 10,000 hands, oh God. Just hallelujah, thank you, God. Help us to use the ones we have, oh God. Hallelujah, help us to bless you with our entire being, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father. God, we pull down uh, excuses today, oh God. Lord God, hallelujah, we pull down every excuse, oh God. We bleed the blood of Jesus against excuses, oh God, that don't even make no sense. And we just bless you today, Father. Help us to replace our excuses with actions. Help us to replace our excuses, oh God, with submitting ourselves to you, oh God, so that we can resist the devil and he flee from us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, help us to stop playing pity pat with the devil and make him move, oh God. Make him loose around here, Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you, God. Help us to be mindful, oh God, that we are already victorious. Help us to be mindful, God, that we are already conquerors. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Lord God, help us to be mindful that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Help us to know, oh God, that the enemy is already defeated. Hallelujah. He's just selling wolf tickets, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, God, we bless you today. We bless you today, God. And we love you today, God. We honor you and we appreciate you, God. And we thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for being our peace today, oh, God, for you are our Jehovah Shalom, oh, God. You give us peace that surpasses all understanding, oh, God. Help us to take control of our peace, oh, God. Take our joy back. Take our happiness back, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, everything that we have allowed the enemy to, to take possession of, oh, God. Lord God, we serve him eviction notices today, oh, God. Can't have our peace. Can't have our joy. Can't have Hallelujah, our families can't have our finances, oh God. Lord God, we submit our finances to you, oh God. And hallelujah, thank you, God. We ask that you will rebuke the devourer for our sakes, oh God, because we honor you with our first fruits, oh God. And we honor you with our tithes and our and our offerings, oh God. Lord God, your word said, will a man rob God? Hallelujah, yet we rob God in tithes and offerings, oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us to trust you, O oh God, knowing that we can't beat God given. Knowing, hallelujah, that if we give as unto you, O oh God, hallelujah, that you would give it back, O oh God. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over your men given to our bosoms, O oh God. O oh God, we bless you right now, O oh God. We bless you right now, God. And we thank you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you right now, God. We repent, God, for every time we went left and you wanted us to go right. We repent, oh, God, for every time we missed you, oh, God. We repent, oh, God, for every time we disappointed you, every time we displeased you, oh, God. We repent of the sins of omission, oh, God, as well as the sins of commission, oh, God. Hallelujah. We ask that you wash us today and that you purge us and that you purify our hearts and our minds, oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. 
Oh, God, we yield to your will, oh, God, and whatever your will is for our lives, oh, God. Help us to accept it, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, God, sometimes we don't understand it. Sometimes we don't like it, oh, God. Sometimes it's not what we ask you for, oh, God. Lord, God, we know what we want, but you know what we need. And help us, oh, God, to be all right. Hallelujah, knowing that, hallelujah, you got our best interest at heart, oh, God. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for every time you told us no, oh, God. Oh, God, because because it's still working together for our good, because we love you, and we are the called according to your purpose, and we bless you for that today, and we thank you for that today, oh God, hallelujah, thank you, God, thank you, God, for how you created us, oh God, in your own image, how you made us the apple of your eye, how you fearfully and wonderfully created us, oh God, so God, when we have low self-esteem, oh God, and we're feeling down and out, oh God, we thank you, oh God, hallelujah, for we can just go to your word and find a blessed assurance. We just go to your word, oh God, and see just how much you love us, oh God, and how much you care. I speak to that one, oh God, that's thinking about taking their life, oh God. And I bind that spirit of suicide right now. We pull it down right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, God. If you don't want your life, give it to God. Hallelujah. If you don't know what to do with it, give it to God. Hallelujah, thank you, God. Oh, we bless you today, God. Oh, we love you today, God. Hallelujah. We honor you today, God. Hallelujah. Lord God, teach us how to pray as we ought, oh God. Teach us how to pray without ceasing, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we want to please you, oh God. We want you to be happy with our praise, God. We don't want to be, hallelujah, getting up at 5 o'clock just to be getting up at 5 o'clock, God. But we come, hallelujah, to the table to be fed, oh God. We come, hallelujah, looking for something from you, oh God. We come, oh God. Hallelujah. Because you spared our life, we want to give it back to you, Father. And we thank you for that. We thank you for every day you allow us to wake up, oh God. Lord God, and we pray that every day you allow us to wake up, you allow us to get up, God. In the name of Jesus, that one, oh God, that one, oh God, that's fallen and feel like they can't get up, oh God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, as they look up to the hills today, God, Lord God, help them, oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Help them to get up again, God. Lord God, many times we mess up and we miss you, oh, God. We say, well, we're going to do it no more. We find ourselves doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, oh, God. And so, God, today we just turn it all over to you, oh, God. Lord God, we tried it our way. We did it our way, oh, God, and our way failed, Father. And so today we give it to you, God. We give it to you, God. We give it to you, God, and we thank you right now. We lift up those, oh, God, that in prisons and jails, oh, God. And, Lord God, we pray, oh God, for their deliverance, oh God. Thank you, God. We pray, oh God, that you would save them and sanctify them and that you would fill them with the blessed Holy Ghost, oh God. God, when you do that, they would stand fast in the liberty wherewith you have made them free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, oh God. Lord God, help them, oh God, to put down the gun to pick up the Bible, oh God. Lord God, help them to know, oh God, that vengeance is yours and you will repay, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I speak to every person that does not know the Lord and the pardon of their sins. Hallelujah. Oh, the way has already been made for you. Hallelujah. Provision has already been made. Hallelujah. The word of God said to me, if I could confess with my mouth and believe in my heart the Lord Jesus and that he has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Open your mouth today and declare, hallelujah, thank you, God. Oh, open your mouth today and invite Jesus into your life as your Lord and as your Savior, and accept him, O oh God, to lead God and direct. Thank him, hallelujah. Thank him for the free gift of eternal life, hallelujah. Thank you, God. And we bless you today, God, and we love you, and we honor you, and we pray all these blessings, O oh God, in Jesus' name. We thank you for salvation, for salvation is free. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Provision has already been made for the believer. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5 of the New Living Translation says, For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. If you believe that, you can decree and declare, I win, I am victorious. That's all we have time for today. Join us again tomorrow morning live at 5 as we give you steps 
to replace fear with faith. God bless you. God keep you. Have an awesome day. Those on the call, please remain on the line. Hallelujah. Friends, for the last hour, you have been listening to Command Your Morning Prayer Line, live from the Upper Room Ministries, Incorporated, located at 702 R.C. Davis Parkway, out of Waycross, Georgia, where the pastor is, Pastor Samuel Sellers III, and Evangelist Dr. Renee Sellers. Dr. Renee Sellers is your host of Command Your Morning. Comes your way Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. until 6 a.m. At a recorded portion of the program in its entirety, 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. Monday through Friday on the Glory Bound Train. Only here on WHLJ. She was always there.